has been changed. Rachel, Lord, who is Jesus to you? He is my Lord. Rachel, on your profession of faith in Jesus, it's with great joy I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, rise to walk in newness of life. Lord, We've done as you've commanded us, and still there is room. Isn't that great? Let's all stand together. Would you welcome those around you? Welcome to worship. We're glad you're here. As we continue our worship this morning, I want to call your attention to God's Word, so listen carefully as I read, would you? Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, hey.
said amen please be seated thank you you've greeted each other i want to say welcome to welcome to first baptist church of alexandria we have guests here lots of them and i've met many i hope i'll get to meet all of you before it's over but if you're our guest take a moment and in the program you will see a a uh, portion of the program that asks your name and address and things like that if you don't mind sharing fill it out and then hold on to it and put it in the offering plate at the very end of the hour. This is a special day. If you look at the program, you'll see today we are honoring the class of 2017. And so I'm going to call on the Michael Dash, our student pastor, youth pastor, to come and lead us in this portion. Good morning. Excuse me, let me try that again. Good morning. <laughs> this morning we gather together to uh, recognize how God has been, is, and will be working in our graduating seniors. And we are so thankful for the gift God has given them and the ways that he is maturing them, as well as the way that each one of them enriches our lives. My prayer is that as they move into the next chapter of their lives, that God will continue his work in them. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says this, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. So this morning we give thanks to God for the gifts that he's given these, senior years, these seniors his handiwork. In advance to serve him and make his name known. And as we send them off, we are presenting them with a life application Bible that we will give them at our senior luncheon following uh, this service. May we continue as a church to support them and as they seek to serve God wherever they go. As I call their names, they're going to come forward and um, we will let them stay on stage. And I ask that you hold your uh, applause to the end. Everyone has come up. Claire Bellner. Rebecca Britton. Rachel Harris. Beckman Hollis. Nicholas Karlinchek. Leah Parker Deck. Rachel Price. Maria Renozo, Catherine Sedgwick, and Walker Venable. Let's give thanks to God for our graduating seniors. As our seniors return to their seats, I'm going to ask that Claire and Beck stay back. Claire is going to give her faith story this morning, and Beck is going to offer a prayer of dedication for our seniors. Uh, so seniors, if y'all will take your seats, and we'll let them do their thing. Good morning. 
My name is Claire Belmer, and I'll be graduating in just a couple weeks. Uh, Michael asked me to come and share my testimony with you today, and the story of how I ended up graduating here in this town is a little confusing, so I thought I would start from the very beginning. Um, I was born in a small town in Oklahoma. My dad was a pastor, and my mom was a Sunday school teacher, so I grew up hearing about Christ my entire life. I accepted Christ when I was just five years old, and I was baptized by my daddy. A few months after that, we moved to Colorado. When I was 10, I started getting serious about my faith, and I was thinking about it, and I couldn't remember exactly when I accepted Christ, so I decided to rededicate my life. After that, I started getting really serious, and I realized that I need to be reading my Bible more, so I decided to do that every day. And I started praying and just getting to know Christ more and following him in my life. Near the end of eighth grade, my dad got a new job, and that brought us here to this church. Um, this church has been such a blessing to me. It was such a change coming from being the pastor's kid to the new kid in the youth group, but I was welcomed with open arms. Um, near the end of my freshman year, we had to leave again because my dad's job takes us all over the world. Um, we went to Mexico City, Mexico, and we were there for two years. Um, I never thought that I'd get to graduate here. We moved to different countries all the time, so it wasn't very likely that we'd get to come back, but we did. I was so excited and amazed at God's plan because not only would I get to graduate at the school where I started high school, but I'd also get to come back here to this church. When we came back, everyone was so welcoming again, and it was just such a blessing. Um, in this time of change, it's hard to find a place to be home, and this was home for me. So just like everyone here welcomed me in this time of change, I want to encourage you if you see someone you don't know, to talk to them, encourage them, because it's a hard time. And I just want to thank you for everything, the way you've supported me. Um, <laughs> would you please pray with me? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity this morning to come here in your house and worship you. Thank you for guiding the class of 2017 throughout these past 18 or so years and in our elementary school, our middle school, and now high school. Thank you for all the people that you've put in our lives to help guide us and shape us, such as our parents, teachers, coaches, and our church family. Please be with us and guide us as we take this next step in our life uh, most likely leaving home for the first time and going to college and continuing with the, our young adult lives. <clears throat> Please help us grow to be Christ-like individuals and continue in our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Charge. 
into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Ezra 8, 21 through 23, and 31 through 32. There by the Ahava Canal, I proclaim to fast, so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and our children with all our possessions. I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to protect us from enemies on the road, because we had told the king, the gracious hand of our God is on everyone who looks to him, but his great anger is against all who forsake him. So we fasted and petitioned our God about this, and he answered our prayer. On the twelfth day of the first month, we set out from the Ahava Canal to go to Jerusalem. The hand of our God was on us, and he protected us from enemies and bandits along the way. So we arrived in Jerusalem, where we rested three days. Tucked into your program this morning is this collector's item. It has the pictures and the names of the various graduates there. You want to keep this as a prayer list. On the back of it is a list of our college graduates, and we always approach this with a little bit of fear, lest we have missed somebody. And if we have, please let us know about that. But tucked inside this brochure is a listing of the scholarship recipients for this year. Our First Baptist of Alexandria Foundation supports so many ministries locally and around the world, but one of the best things the foundation does is provide these scholarships for our students, and they're multi-year, so a lot of these have graduated in years past. Some are seminary students now, uh, in college, graduate school, and their names and the various funds from which their scholarships have come, are listed there. If you are a recipient this year of one of these scholarships, would you stand, please? Just stand right where you are. Let's congratulate them. Thank you. You may be seated. Are any of the college graduates here today. If so, if you would stand, we'd like to recognize you. As I always say to the graduates, we will keep the light on for you. So remember where home is and come home as often as you can. Let's continue our worship together. Would you stand? Thou my wisdom and thou 
Who needs prayer this morning? You're facing something in your life, a surgery this week, or you're going through a dark valley of bereavement, or you're facing a big decision. It's our privilege as a church family to pray for one another. So I want you to come. Stand here with me. I'll verbalize the prayer, but by your coming, you're saying I'm standing in the need of prayer today. Would you come? Would you join me in prayer, please? Our Father in heaven, we come to you today because you've invited us to, you've encouraged us to call upon your name and you'll hear and answer. You've invited us into the throne room and we come with our burdens. Not only these standing, but on every row in this room, there's a burden. I pray that you will speak to hearts where there's physical infirmity, you will touch and heal. And where there's sadness, you will give again joy. And that, Lord, when we face big decisions, you'll give us wisdom to do the right thing. Lord, we commit ourselves to you. You know the answer. We don't always know what we should pray for as we ought. We can just groan, but your spirit prays when we can't. And so we are bold today to ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can go back to your seats. Try to find Ezra, if you can, in the Old Testament. Ezra, Nehemiah, then you come to Psalms and Proverbs and all the rest. We have honored our high school graduates today, but we've been honoring a lot of folks in recent days. Just a few days ago, I was in this room uh, helping to recognize our weekday preschool graduates. And they were in cap and gown, too. And I encouraged them to continue on with their education, not to... Not to quit too soon, and I I hope they will. And then uh, Wednesday night, we had our first graders in here, and we presented Bibles, real Bibles, Uh, just like you've got. It had some helps that are geared for children, but it's the text of the real Bible, and they were so proud of that. It was a wonderful experience. Yesterday, a completely different way, I performed a wedding ceremony, and there's a couple at a transition point in their lives, beginning something new. So that's what I want to talk about today, specifically to the graduates, but to every one of the rest of us as well. Here's the uh, opening sentence of the sermon I wrote earlier in the week. We live in a dangerous world where we're always thinking about the threat of terrorism We go to a ball game, we go to a concert, we go to a club, and one of the first things we do when we walk in is to look for the exit signs so we know which way to go if it comes to that. Then I woke up this morning, as you did, and heard about what happened last night in London where people lost their lives due to terrorism. The world can be a dangerous place. The sidewalk can be a dangerous place, as those who lost their lives lost it uh, there at London Bridge, the sidewalk. Every year in the United States, 5,000 or more people die crossing the street. Can you believe that? I can believe it because I was in New York Monday and Tuesday, and I was walking with hundreds of other people down the busy thoroughfares, and I saw people, every one of us, on our screens reading while we're walking, coming to crosses and sometimes not noticing it 
and dangerously walking out into traffic. On Tuesday, Audrey and I are walking down 6th Avenue, and uh, Audrey looks down, and I feel her stopping, and I look back. She picks up a wad of checks. Somebody had lost them carelessly on their way to the bank, I suppose, all to the same individual, already endorsed. So she picked it up. We read the name of the individual. All the checks were entertainment industry oriented. Two of them were from California, but one of them was from an address about 12 to 15 blocks down 6th Avenue. And so we had some time, and so we made the long trek down there, had a hard time getting them to tell us how to reach the guy, but we finally got a phone number, and we were able to call this individual. His name was Brian. We told him, we had your checks. They totaled about $1,000. That'd be rent money for a half room up there in Manhattan, and <laughs> we know he needed it, and so uh, he was delighted. And we stopped somewhere to eat, and he met us there, and we handed over the checks. I had noticed that one of them was from Saturday Night Live. And so when he asked, can I do anything for you? <laughs> I said, well, yeah, matter of fact. And so next season, one Sunday you won't see me, I'll be up there probably on Saturday night uh, in the audience. Not on the show, but, <laughs> but in the audience, in the audience. It can be dangerous out on the street if you're not paying attention. Now, in our text, the children of Israel are on the road, and it's a dangerous road. This is the second wave of exiles going back to Jerusalem. The first wave uh, left Babylon in 515 B.C. They went back and rebuilt the temple. Now it is 57 years later, and another wave goes back carrying treasures for the temple. And they pause at the Ahavi Canal. They pause there to get organized and to get ready for the journey that is still to come. I'm told uh, that when the pilgrims set sail to come to the new world, the pastor of their church back home preached on this text to send them off with a prayer for their journey. Graduates, you today are at something like the Ahavi Canal. This is a pause. You finished one thing, and you're about to start something brand new, exciting, a bit daunting. Perhaps there's a little bit of fear. But the fact is, each of us is on a great journey. Life itself is a great journey. These uh, Jewish folk are setting out on a 900-mile trek across the desert. That's a long way. But you are starting on a journey that will take a lifetime. These Jews in chapter 8 pause here because it seems they have lost some of their original vision of going home, of resettling. They've lost some of the joy of that. Because in the first wave, 50,000 of them went back, but now only 1,500 are going back. They've lost a bit of it. So they stop at this place for some clarity and for a renewed commitment. This would be a good time, graduates, for you to face a moment of clarity and renewed commitment. Do you believe the things you were taught here at First Baptist Church? I mean, we've tried to give you the best we've got. We've given you our best leaders and musicians and, and all the planning and resources. We've tried to pass on to you the faith once and for all delivered to the saints. The question now, is, we, we gave that to you. That was ours. We gave it to you. The question now is, is it yours? As you prepare to leave us, is the faith yours? Now, I ask that question because it's a, it's a difficult journey out there. The road gets rough, and it's tough. And if you're not sure what you believe now, it's going to be difficult in that class at the university when your faith is challenged. It's going to be hard at the sorority or fraternity. It's going to be hard there in that dormitory 
to live for Christ unless you know him and are thoroughly committed to him. It's got to be your faith. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What about your life is distinctively Christian? Because when you get to the university or you get out into the workforce, you go off to the military, they're not going to know you. They're not going to know where you're from. They're not going to know that you grew up at First Baptist Church of Alexandria. What they know is what they see. And what about you is distinctively Christian? There are going to be a lot of joys along the way, but it is going to be tough. I want you to turn in your Bibles to a passage. You, if you've memorized anything, you probably have memorized this. Psalm number 23. Would you turn there quickly? Psalm number 23. I've entitled this talk this morning, A Journey with the Shepherd. My friend Pepper Choplin wrote a musical about the 23rd Psalm. It was performed at Lincoln Center this week. That's why I was there, just to support him. But it got me thinking about this. Let me just read it to us quickly. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still, quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's interesting. He begins the psalm talking about God. He makes me lie down. But you come to verse 4, and now he's talking to the shepherd. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When I said the road can be rough, I'm talking about that line. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. There are dark places. There are shadowy times. There are valleys. And you'll go through them. It's a great journey we're on. Now, the goal, the ultimate goal is maturity in our faith. What God wants from you and from me is that the longer we're on this planet, the longer we're in his word, the longer we're a part of a fellowship like this, the more we resemble Jesus. So I could ask the question another way. What about your lifestyle reminds people of Jesus? Anything about the way you live your life. When people see you, they don't know your background. They're just with you for a, a few moments maybe. Can they see Jesus or what they think Jesus would be like? They may have it a bit wrong, but th there's, a, there's a ghost or there's a whisper, there's an echo in, in our culture about Jesus. Do you resemble that to anybody? The goal is that we become Christ-like, that we mature in our faith. So we're on this journey. On the journey, we need to place our total dependence on God. That's what they're doing in chapter 8. Total dependence on God. And take a risk. Go for it. They stop because they don't know the future. They stop to remind themselves that no matter what the future is, if they're depending on God, there is no limit to what can be accomplished. Now, Ezra has talked a good game, but it looks like in this text, if you know the background, it looks like he's having second thoughts. They have not asked for a military escort. They haven't asked for a contingent of soldiers to go this 900 miles with them because they're bandits and they're enemies out there. But they didn't ask for security detail because uh, Ezra had made such a big deal about trusting God. God is gracious. God is good. God's going to take care of us. So he, he never asked. And now he's, a, he's ashamed to ask. What will they think if now I ask 
for some, some help for guns and swords and spears. There would not have been anything wrong with asking for military support. Nehemiah will do it in the next book when he takes a group, when he goes. He, he has soldiers to accompany him. Wouldn't have been wrong. But Ezra, he has such total confidence in God. He stated it. He's on record as saying it, that he's going to trust God to see them through. So he can take a risk. He can be bold, and I want you to be bold, all of us to be bold in our lives. You'll never know how far you can go until you go as far as you can, and then you take one more step. Maybe Ezra is drawing strength from that 23rd Psalm. We see the shepherd's place. The Lord is my shepherd. He's out in front. The shepherd, Jesus, the great shepherd, is out in front. His provision, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Another translation says, I have everything that I need. That's how you can go forward. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, Paul says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Everything you need, he graciously provides. He doesn't give us everything we want. He's wiser than that. We want things that would destroy us, but he gives us what we need. So when you're out there on this journey and you hit one of those rough spots and you need something, call upon your Lord, the shepherd, for he will graciously be with you. And Ezra remembered perhaps the promise in that psalm, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. What a promise. You're 18 years old. Would that still be true when you're 68 years old? In your 70s or 80s? Will it still be true? I will be with you all the way. Through college, through graduation, through the maternity ward at the hospital, maybe through the divorce proceedings, maybe when you lose your job, when the times get rough, he promises to be with you all the days of your life. And that's good, but it's better than that. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It doesn't stop at death. It continues on for all eternity. That's his great promise. And our part, our part is to believe and trust. To, to, to trust beyond what we can see. To know that his promise will see us through. Our part is to trust. So Ezra stops and he humbles himself and he prays and he seeks God's face. And the answer comes. What can we expect? Well, we can expect success on the journey. There'll be failures here and there, but we can expect success by the end. Look at chapter 8, verse 31. On the twelfth day of the first month, we set out from the Havava Canal to go to Jerusalem. The hand of the Lord was on us. And he protected us from enemies and bandits along the way. So we arrived in Jerusalem and we rested there for three days. God answered. They didn't have a bit of trouble. That whole 900 miles, no army, no, no uh, support system. They just had God and God was enough because they were trusting he was there for them. When we uh, presented the Bibles to the little children this week, I uh, walked them through it all and showed them some of the aspects of that particular volume. And then I shared with them some of my favorite verses. And the last one I shared was one you know well, but I would give it to these graduates now. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, what you can figure out. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. It's funny, I was uh, 
telling the children to take care of this Bible and, uh, you know, don't, don't stack other books on top of it. That's just something I believe in. And don't throw it across the room and don't tear pages and things like that. Take care of it. And uh, one child in the church took me quite literally, and I saw a picture. He had taken the Bible and uh, put it in the, in the seat beside him in the car and put a seat belt over it <laughs> to protect that Bible. And there it is right there. Now, he's taking care of his Bible. But that promise, trust in the Lord, oh, if we'd all do that we would experience great success on our journeys too. So graduates, you're starting yours or, or another phase of it. Those first graders, they're getting ready to start theirs. Uh, those preschoolers, they're ready to begin the whole, the whole journey. And that lovely couple yesterday beginning their life together. We're all on a journey. Let's go with the shepherd. Journey with the shepherd. Would you pray with me? In just a moment, we're going to stand and sing. And if there's somebody here today who wants to be a part of our church, why don't you just step out and come to where I'm standing and tell me so. If you've not been baptized, we can do that in the weeks to come. If you would like to give your heart to Christ maybe for the very first time, I invite you to step out and come and we'll help you with that. Father, bless each one who's heard this message and now call people to yourself. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Let's stand and we sing. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take Him at His word Just to rest upon His promise just to know the saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust him more. Oh how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood. Just in simple faith to plunge me Neath the healing, cleansing blood Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him How I proved him o'er and o'er Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust him o'er Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus us. From sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, all oh, for grace to trust him. Please be seated. Thank you. Please pray, with Please pray with me. Lord, this morning, Pastor Don has laid at your feet the requests, the griefs of this congregation. Beck has asked for your blessing on this graduating class and the transitions they face. Lord, this morning, we're reminded in Psalm 1 and 23 and in Ezra 8, that you are our planner, our protector, and our provider. And Lord, as we close out our time together worshiping you this morning, may these gifts that we bring to you honor you, 
May, the, may you use them to your honor and glory. Lord, and as we leave here today, I pray that we might be different people having been in the house of the Lord. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.